Doha, undisputed powerboat capital of the world. From the mightiest offshore giants, the thrilling, adrenaline fueled pro GPs, to the fastest men on water anywhere. And now combining the innovative with the traditional, the next generation, and all the fun of the fair, a tiny glimpse into the future. Welcome to the 2014 Qatar Cup. Commercially, politically and in sport, Qatar these days is a major world player. It's hardly a dull moment. This weekend, World Offshore 225. Cat racing with a new twist. Pro Boat GP. Raw energy. Unlimited aquabytes. Pure adrenaline. Formula Future and Junior Jet Ski. So cool. And a man who knows exactly in which direction he's travelling. We have the Junior Hydro, we have the, the Pro Class, um, you know, C1 and C2. We have the 225 coming in, we have the um, Adult Marathon uh, on Saturday. So it's, uh, you know, it's a, bi it's a big thing. Um, you know, for us, we wanted to show um, um, everybody within the UIM that when we are committed on something, that we will go all the way and there is nothing that's going to stop us uh, from reaching our goal. When you talk power boats, Hassan is your man. He's got loads this weekend. First, the exhilarating UIM Class 225s. 28-foot catamarans, 225 horsepower two-stroke engines, top speed 200 kilometers an hour, mandatory pit stops. That's how they line up. The favorites, number three, Ashik Tash and still 88 on a five point kilometer track with a sneaky left hander. Time to do battle. On board was Steel laying the early marker. Meshik Tash, EFE 33, Qatar 1, and Miel 11, a chasing pack already. Around the Cornish marks, 1 and 2, and down the home straight, EFE with Miel on their left. Meshik Tash, Murat Lecky and Chubert Uka getting closer to still. Lap 2, EFE pit, but before the official crew were there. They depart without waiting the mandatory 30 seconds. So, Qatar move up to fourth. Always plenty to spot in this class of racing. Introduced by the Istanbul Offshore Club, IOC, in 2003, and then upgraded by the sports governing body, UIM, in 2008. to pit, Miel, they will drop to six. Then, leader Steele, they will drop to third. So, all geared up now for a grand finale. Lap nine, Beshik Tash lead, but they haven't pitted. Still are second, EFE are third. Then, still up the pace, fast lap 162 kilometers an hour. Beshik Tash, pit stop, drop to third. EFE holds second, and still are the winners. Great stuff. For a slight amendment to the finishing order, EFE Mitsubishi are relegated by officials to third following their aborted pit stop. Beshik Tash promoted to second. Here are the delighted winners. Too easy, wasn't it? Uh, uh, the Not race, the, the, the race was never easy, you know. And but uh, yeah, it was a comfortable race. And perhaps unfairly relegated, it's a pragmatic honor. Oh, good. At the beginning of the race, we made two tours, and then we decided to go to the uh, pit stop. There had been a problem in there, and accordingly, uh, we have continued. The organization has decided to give us 20 more seconds. Are you happy about that? Um, at least we have seen the podium. Yes, I am happy and uh, I will be chasing the first two boats tomorrow for sure. 
Not too sure I'd be happy, but there it is. Steel first, Besiktas second, the FE third. Rock and roll time next. UMSF's Peter Dredge explains. I think it's a wonderful vision to encourage big local events which are going to bring participation. We've got people from Turkey, you know, all over the Middle East. And I think it's fantastic to see such an enthusiastic group. It will only do the sport good. There's two classes which are essentially 200 horsepower and 300 horsepower. All the engines are absolutely standard, the propellers are standard, the boats are all production boats. So it's a very affordable class and it's the first stepping stone into uh, getting people to get the bug and getting further up the ladder. Getting started, of course, so much of what this festival is all about. Boat GP racing in particular, filling the void between giving it a go and a further step up into world competition. 200 horsepower class then, first to go, six in number, favourites, Mustafa Dashti and Ahmed Appel, number 21, Ahmed and Nasser Fassam, 80, and Abdelaziz Shaheen and Mohamed Taleb, number eight. And the form book coming up trumps. Dashti and Abel, Kuwait, in their distinctive bat boat lead from start to finish. And, unusually in this class, not a single overtake anywhere in the entire race. That's how they cross the line. C1 up next. 300 horsepower this time. Top speed around 120 kilometers an hour and a much more frenetic affair all round. Three abreast at the front for the most part. And 10 changes of position in the 24 minutes of racing. Taleb and Bowenay, number two, dropping to second before regaining the lead again on lap six. With number 17, Abdullah Salem and his Bapo providing most of the X Factor. Once again, though, only ever one winner, Mohamed Taleb Qatar, taking maximum points in this Qatar Cup race one shootout. Mohamed and Saad, Turkey, Kuwait, picking up the second, ahead of Mohamed Shaheen, also from Qatar. Time, though, now for the next generation to show their hand, junior jet ski and Formula Future. Let's go back to the man in charge. We have a huge list of participants who wanted to come in, um, do the, um, uh, the marathon or the Formula Future or the uh, Junior Hydro. So all those three classes that we have now in the QMSF are targeted to, to get the uh, junior level entry into QMSF and hopefully we'll have some um, you know, world champions uh, in the near future. As a role model too, Sheikh Hassan's connectivity both on and off the water is of massive importance to this junior academy. Would you like to beat Sheikh Hassan? Yes. <laughs> so let's go to the very beginning. Formula Future, where tiny tots, some as young as seven, are given the chance of driving a boat with an instructor. As in every sport, some will be better than others. But one will shine. Youssef gets most points and also wins a few hearts. Yes, I did enjoy it because I like, you know, sea and I like to drive jet skis and all that things to do on the beach. And Formula Future's a hit with all the dads too. This uh, training is very, very good for the children. Uh, they prepared uh, them uh, for the future, uh, but we need uh, to make several time for training for, for him. Congratulations, eh? well done. This is the root of the pilots in the future. And we, we are in Qatar very proud that uh, Imran came to Doha and he is giving our kids a good lesson. Sorry, no time to blink. We're back with the 225s, eight boats, 16 competitors, and race two of three on the start line. In any three heat competition, the second race so often pivotal, but never more so than here. Steel 88, so dominant in heat one, can virtually wrap things up with a second victory. They lead already. The L, number 11 in close attendance. 
home straight, heading in towards Mark 1 at the Corniche. Sea conditions almost flat calm. Beautiful exit there from Steele. Corniche, Mark 2, Beshik Tash cutting tight inside, and from third, a chance here for a pop at second. Down the home straight for the first time, Murat Lecky and Tuber Uja, Beshik Tash still on line for a second. Maybe lacking a little grunt to make it stick. Around the top end of the course. Uh, well, and Miel's friendly little hose down there. A notification of their intention. Well, these really are world-class racing catamarans. Closed cockpits, minimum length seven metres, maximum nine metres. Weight, 1,350 kilograms. That includes the pilots. The powerhouse, 225 horsepower OMC six-cylinder two-stroke engines. All standard. Props are a free choice. And the battle for second is still warming up. Besiktas swapping lanes, lining up the left-hander this time. It's good. Next mark, 90 degree right hander at the Corniche. Still, still lead in excess of four seconds. Clear water ahead. Sea conditions perfect. Oh, and from the outside lane now, in second place, Beshik Tash, the first boat to pit. Well, I don't quite get that. That will cost them position, and as a result, they're back in the traffic when they exit. Well, that's a strange, strange decision. Miel returned to second. You saw there Kerim Zorlu, big chef's number two, also going through. So, Lecky and Uja on their way again. Mandatory 30s, second pit stop out of the way. And how many places lost? The overnight leaders still to decide when best to drop in for theirs. The boat behind them on the leaderboard. Now over 33 seconds behind on the track in this crucial second race, and they've dropped to fifth. Power boats and yachts also with room on the pit stop to take up residence in fourth. Beshik Tash momentum has to start here. Lecky, another superb exit from the Corniche, moves them back into fourth with a little bit to spare there. Race order still 88 PL 11 and number two big chefs. The next boat for Beshik Tash to try and reel in. An interesting stat coming in here, 88 last lap, 150.7 kilometres an hour, three last lap, 155.2, gap between them drops to 30 seconds, 88 still to a pit, well, now all the signs of mechanical issues, but they're definitely easing up, well possibly of course Besiktas have slipped under the radar here with that early pit stop, but time will tell that. Big shots into the pit lane. They were second. That will become third. Beshik Tash still averaging over 155 kilometers an hour. Still up to just under 156 kilometers an hour. Someone has passed the message. Big chefs there, their 30 second stint in the pits done and dusted, followed in by the race leaders. It's crunch time in heat two. Beshik Tash at the bottom end of the course with less than 30 seconds to get to the top before still emerge. Halfway to their goal. Still are ready to roll, and here they go. Well, this is going to be so, so tight when they meet at the top end of this course. Still up ahead there on the re-entry loop. Beshik Tash flat out at over 200 kilometers an hour. Championship chances, hanging on the next five seconds. Miel will be the new race leaders, but haven't pitted. They're still, where are Beshik Tash? There! A oh, big, big four kilometers from Murat Lecky and Tuberk Uja. In front of still, carrying the speed to make that stick. Brilliant! Forget your ex-cats, this is fabulous racing. Final salvo of pit stops underway, but maybe irrelevant for the most part. 88 or number three will surely now pick up the major spoils in this important second heat. 
Hakan Van Lee brings in number 11. Bashik Tash will now go into the final lap in charge. Just. Tuncher and Urptum closing up. Leke almost scraping the marks, attempting to repel the Origin Faders. Gap less than two seconds in closing. Drag race to the chequered flag. Behind them, the big chefs now. Hurtling down the home straight. Miel exiting the pit lane. The third prize on offer here. It's another tight one. Here comes Miel at full track. Bang in position for the left-hander. Battles all over the track. Where do you look next? That's a great overtake. And up ahead. The leader through the bottom turns, unscathed, down the home straight for the penultimate time. Gap between them and still stabilising at two seconds. Lecky and Uja are holding their own in this vital last lap. Speed, 156.87 kilometres an hour, still 157.02. They're still picking it up, but only two kilometres left now. It's too little, it's too late. The chequered flag is out. The arms are waving and the boys of Besiktas have done what they needed to. They've taken this World Championship into a winner-takes-all final. Still recognising at the last mark the game was up. Backing off down the straight with Miel behind them in third place. Wow. What an advert that was for offshore powerboat racing. And what an advert for this adventurous 225 class. So, the order in which they passed the finish flag at the end of 40 stunning minutes. Setting up a world title shootout that will go all the way to the wire. As they say, all to play for. Today we are first. That was a lucky day for us. We had no trouble. That was a very, very, uh, a little bit rough sea, but. We are a bit tired, but that's okay. That's a very lucky day for us. Yeah. We will see tomorrow. Today we were at the first position, but uh, in the communication with the, our team manager, uh, we didn't know our competitor, the Besiktas team, was in. The, they made their pit stop. We didn't know this, and uh, we were so relaxed, and we get our pit stop very slow and safe, and they pass it. And it was really surprised for us. <laughs> so time to take a breather then. The final day coming up. So much to look forward to. Back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Doha, world capital extraordinaire and final day of the new Qatar Cup. And what better way to start than the top six junior jet ski finalists? Favourites Sheikh Yassim Al Thani, Abdulaziz Ali Brahim, and Sheikh Nawaf Al Thani. Six young men of differing statures and backgrounds riding six identical machines, all with one goal to win the first Qatar Cup Junior Championship. It's Abdulaziz Ali Brahim with the whole shot. He establishes a lead, which he holds on all the way to the chequered flag. Shadowed by Yassim Al Thani and Abdullah Al Obeidli, who get close but never close enough. There's disappointment for number three favourite Nawaf Al Thani. A nasty wash throws him onto the handlebars and drops him to four. Averaging an incredible 75 kilometres an hour, it's a physical battle for everyone, but one in which the racecraft learnt will be invaluable in the future. Safety too is a big issue, teaching young competitors not only to respect other water users, but also themselves. Helmets, life jackets and jack plugs are all de rigueur. And for Abdulaziz Ali Brahim, a day to remember, his first win on an international stage. But to be honest, anyone in that top six with every reason to be very, very proud indeed of their effort. You asked this man why he's so good. You said a collision to Sean He says he didn't let go of the throttle. <laughs> well, a bit to learn there then. That doesn't always work as we know. But he was brilliant today. 
Sorry, no time for a cup of tea. We must move swiftly on. Rowboat GP next. C2 first on the water. Quick reminder of how Heat 1 finished. Mustafa Dashti and Ahmed Appel, number 21, winning at a counter. Ahead of Abdelaziz Shaheen and Mohamed Taleb, number 8, with Nasser and Ahmed Fassam, 80, in third place. Well, difficult to see how that will change a great deal in this final heat. The back boat crew quick off the start line once again and so tight on the turns, they are a tough act to get ahead of. Halfway point, top four, 21, Dashtian, Appel, eight, Shaheen and Taleb, 80, Fassam, Fassam, and 22, Malikan and Hulefi. Just five on the start line this weekend. Updated safety regulations and a tightening of technical specifications taking care of that. But it's a positive step by QMSF to get Pro Boat GP in line with comparable classes elsewhere. Already a number of European teams now eager to join up in 2015 and more will follow. It's affordable and again, the place to get noticed. Dashti and Appel once again proving they will represent Qatar in some style, romping home with plenty to spare. Over the line, it's as you were in race one, with almost flat con conditions playing a part in that. And it follows, if results in race one reflect those of race two, then this would be the overall outcome. So, what next to whet your appetite? A little unlimited jet ski, maybe? Well, no problem there. Your wish is granted. I have to be relaxed because it's very long distance. You have to relax and you have to, to think and look like you look like mech technique, you know? Because this is also 30 minutes. The tank of fuel of the jet ski is no more than 30 minutes. You have to like release a little bit to cool down the engine because it's very high RPM and very high speed. Walid Oshoshani used to being top of the pile in Qatar, but today up against 28 other locals eager to strip him of his bragging rights. Among them, Tamer Al Darwish, number 20, Hamis Al Hosni, 77, Mohammed Al Hadis, number 3, and Big Brother Majid. But in the event, Wally troubles no one. Lap four, he blows up and bows out. Oh, Dawash is in the clear and running at the same speed as the 225 offshore boat we saw earlier. 150 kilometers an hour. Oh, Hosni in second is quick. But he ain't quite that quick. I'll hate us neither. He grinds to a frustrating halt on the last lap. Leaving a very happy new contender to scoop the jackpot. There was some cheer for the Shashani family. Brother Majid almost made the podium in fourth. We're running out of space in this brand new all action Qatar Cup show. So let's grab brief highlights from the Pro Boat C1 final. This is how they finished race one, or that was. Let's go with race two. Line abreast early on at the front. Race one winners, Dashian Garib, 17, taking on Mohammed and Abdulaziz Shaheen, number eight. Three hundred horsepower, speeds of up to one hundred and forty kilometers an hour. The class is certainly not for the faint of heart. Monohulls always more likely than catamarans to hook and spin out of control in calm or moderate sea conditions, but on the upside, always more adept when it's windy and rough. By lap four, the race leaders have dropped to fourth, with Dashtin Garib taking over at the front. Two laps later, though, all square again. Well, well, almost. And there's trouble brewing behind. In an attempt to rejoin the leading pack, the Shaheen's number eight overcut the Cornish mark and take a spinner. <laughs> Leaving old foals 18 and two to scrap it out during the closing laps.
Vashti and Garib's lead is short-lived. They move back to third, having dropped to fourth after taking the mandatory long lap. On a course, no concern to Talib and Bowenane. They comfortably see off Turkey and Rubayan, 18, in the finish straight. The Shaheens, number eight, are third. Ali and Dash Gopal at fourth, with Dash and Garib eventually finishing fifth. Pro Bowl GP winners then for 2014 goes to number two. Representing your country in any sport is always a bit special. It's an honor to me to represent Qatar in this kind of racing. But the secret is you have, you should have a good communicating between you and the throttle man. So everything is easy. Driving is nice and smooth. Just if you have a good throttle man, you you can guarantee the win sometimes. From circuit racing to offshore 225 when you've never driven the boat before is a huge step, but he's acquitted himself with some pride. Final race, oh and there he goes, right up with the leaders, hurtling down the start straight, approaching 200 kilometers an hour. Just to recap, remember Murat Lecky and Chuba Uja, number three, Beshik Tash, stormed back into contention for the world title with that superb win over race one winners, Tuncher and Erkten, still 88. Early problems here though for EFE. Mitsubishi, after pitting on the first lap, the boat fails to start. They get going eventually, but will rejoin at the back. Business as usual for Steel, but things are not going quite as well for their main rivals. When 11 take their stop, Beshik Tash, who must win to lift the title, are still only third behind number two, Big Shet. A strategically positioned pit stop now, probably their only way back. Bo Boydley, enjoying his best spell of the week so far, moves into fourth. Beshik Tash, pit on lap seven, aiming to get back on the track in clear water and then pull back some of the 38 plus seconds they will then be trailing by. But team managers that still are wised up to that one, they bring their man in next. They will now know exactly what lies ahead, unlike race two. Number two, Big Chef take the lead, but more importantly, Vashik Tash will stay in third. Lap 11, Big Chefs arrive for their 30 seconds on the pontoon and still roar into the lead. Vashik Tash will stay in third, but more importantly, 20 seconds adrift. It's stills to lose now. Laps of 157.8 kilometers now, 159.3, keep them on track for the title. Bit of fun here later on when EFE, Mitsubishi and Big Chef try to decide who's most deserving of second place. Number two. Always favourite for this one. And how cool is this? Touch and Urktem, enough to spare in the end to cross the finish line at paddling speed. Deserving of a title after totally destroying the key opposition at the start flag of this third race. Beshik Tash finished third and Big Chef's second after EFE Mitsubishi took a late pit stop. Final leaderboard then, the most accomplished team at the top and a story of what might have been for the rest. Hey, it's over. <laughs> Today was good. Yeah. Uh, we, were, we were a little bit aggressive, uh, but uh, first 10 tour, first 10 lap, it was very uh, fast, really fast, and sometimes catch 9, 91, 92 miles. And the weather, the, the water and the weather is perfect for us. And we are very happy. We are the world champion. We have the second place title of the world championship. We are very happy. We can be the first, but as Murat said, transmission problem and overheat problem stopped us. Maybe next year then. And that's almost it from the first ever Qatar Cup organized by the young team of the QMSF and an event that's made many friends and will open many doors in the future for certain.
Hope you enjoyed the show. It's been a lot of fun. From me, Peter Butler, see you next time.